So, just talking about the accountabilities, some of the ones are ensures risks are managed effectively, make sure procurement guidelines are met, seek written authority from ministers if any action is inconsistent with proper performance of the accountable officer's functions. And I know one of the, the comments you made earlier was that the job is to deliver on ministers' wishes. So why would somebody with seven years' experience not go and put all that into place? Because there's been numerous concerns raised with the contracts. Why would somebody with that amount of experience not get confirmation from a minister, written confirmation on the decisions that were made? Well, I, again, I think they did. I mean, John put forward... The Director of Aviation put forward all the considerations in relation to the contract award and sought ministerial approval on the back of that. That's the paperwork that I've got in front of me, so I, I'm reviewing the same paperwork as, as the committee has. I haven't, I haven't spoken to John or to Mr Middleton. I, I know that you have written to both, or at least one, to get uh, written evidence. But I'm not sure I can add any, anything further to that. I just find it hard to believe that he's, he's not got that. Um, in the letter dated 20th of August 2015 to the Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure Investment in Cities, various issues are raised. Ministerial approval was sought by the 27th of August, just seven days after receiving the letter. And this was due to the Minister being on holiday. So it states that the date had already been extended for two months. This was for signing the contract. So paragraph 8 states... CalMAC will not be in a position to fully endorse the shipbuilding documentation by the required deadline. Further efforts will be undertaken during the detailed design of the vessel by FMEL to address any outstanding points. And it also highlights issues concerning the access of the, ves the vessels to various ports they may serve, requirement for modifications at some ports, the vessels are dual fuel, LNG brings some logistic challenges and may require some additional fueling infrastructure. So there was lots of issues being raised, um, other than just the ferries, um, infrastructure ones as well. Why was there such a last minute rush to get this signed off? Because it had already been extended by two months. The minister goes on holiday and it was then given to the cabinet secretary to sign off. So why was there such a last minute rush? Is it because of the number of issues in the contract? No, I, 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 well, I'll bring in Fran here, but I don't think there was a rush to sign it off. I think CMAL, uh, in negotiating with the, the bidder, trying to get to a point where they could sign the contract, took a period of, of what, over two months to, to get that, those final issues resolved from preferred bidder to contract award. I don't think that's a, a rush procedure in terms of, of, of CMAL. As the procuring authority, bearing in mind that Transport Scotland don't have a role in the contract, this is between CMAL as the buyer and FML as the builder uh, had to satisfy themselves that they were able to enter that contract and, and resolve whatever issues that were upon. But Fran, is there anything else you want to add? I don't think there's anything to add to that, Roy. It doesn't, uh, I wouldn't categorise it as being a rushed process. Uh, CMAL may be able to offer more in terms of their direct experience of that procurement process. Um, it is typical from the period from preferred bid bidder to conclusion of the contract for there to be refinement of the contract terms. Um, and it would have been recorded in the advice to minister just in line with the very obligations that you've set out and the desire to make sure that there is a, a full record of risks and issues that, 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 are, that are there. But I, I wouldn't, I'm not aware of there having been any particular rush nor uh, of, for minister's holiday arrangements to have influenced the timing of decisions in any way. So was there a communication issue then? Because I'm just thinking the minister that you're saying is responsible for signing it off and you're saying that it would only have been Derek Mackay who was the minister at the time. So there wouldn't have been any other involvement. He had the authority to go and sign that off. But would there not have been communication between him, Transport Scotland, CMAL, etc. to get this contract signed and he just goes on holiday? And it's then passed to Keith Brown to sign it off who has, as you're saying, wouldn't have had any knowledge of it in advance because it would only have been Derek Mackay that was signing it off? Well, Mr, Mr Mackay, as Transport Minister, would have been re reporting to the CAPSEC so, uh, and, under that portfolio. So, uh, and the advice would have been the same to either CAPSEC or Minister. So if, if a Minister isn't available, then I, I, I am assuming that between the Minister and the CAPSEC, they have agreed who will, who will take decisions in their absence. But I'm in an area that is... You know, I, I wasn't party to these discussions or these exchanges at that time. As I say, I know that you have written to 
former colleagues to seek their we evidence. Actually, we, yeah, just for the record, we haven't written to them yet. We, are, um, we have indicated that we are going to write to them, but uh, the letter hasn't dropped through their letterboxes yet. My apologies. That's fine. Um, 